Okay, we've done it before. All right. Our track record before a global pandemic is there for all to examine. Post that, if you think that the COVID and the issues that have occasioned our economy is irrelevant, when every country across this globe mm. is really, obviously, with different right. degrees, be, right. based on their own mm. peculiar circumstances. Mm. And I'm telling you that the good people of this country will ask the key questions. Right. And if Mr. Mahama was rejected mm. flat out in 2016 mm -hmm. and again in 2020, why is he coming back? Right. Even if I'm who was thrown out. Now, Felix, even, <laughs> even, even, in, even, even in addition to that, I do know that in 2019. We've had two texts. What? Please, please, please. Two please, texts. I accept quietly when session. we're speaking. I'm not going to tolerate interference. Even in 2019, <laughs> the city depreciated by 13%. But I was going to make the point. And compare the record oh, please, of NEC before that. Please, please, please. I told yes. you that I won't tolerate when, interference. I you know, when you were talking, he didn't talk, please. Even Akufwad, who was thrown out in 2012. And 20, uh, what do you call it? No, 20, 2008 and 2012 came back. President Amar was opposition leader in 2020. So if you lose elections, it's not a big deal. If losing an election was a reason why you never came back, Pufado would never be in the flash house drinking tea this morning. So that is a huge joke. The other thing is that this government is a pathetic joke. Their excuses are laughable. It is a reason why Gen Z folks are demonstrating against them. Because they have made these pathetic excuses over and over again, and they look like clowns. To begin with, you are telling me that our entire economic problem is due to a 50.1 billion payment that you made for SS Energy and COVID expenditure. Meanwhile, you have had 830 billion. You have borrowed up to 600 billion Ghana cities. If you take 50 billion out of that, and that is why your economy has collapsed, you are a joke. You must be thrown out of government at the earliest opportunity. My name is Pen Dream TV. Pen Dream TV, dear, I see them, you po. It's you for a higher pen room TV in Pachos and your first time I subscribe to channel and offer on Sabo I don't manage to set a bear the video be a tour. We be a first person I wish you a video new you pet send a voice note my it was 0277 1287777 0277128777 for young court nanko share and a video number. There are own benchmarks or indicators that will measure him. The vice president, the presidential candidate of the MPP, Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia Bai, alongside his rival, the NDC presidential candidate, John Dramani Mahama. Andrew. Yes. First, your well, own observation. Let me, let, me, let me begin by saying good morning to mm. uh, my good friend Felix and yourself. I cherish viewers, uh, especially those in my constituency, uh, and to take the opportunity to congratulate the new patriotic party. Uh, for a well-organized congress across in excess of 300 centers in Ghana. The Electoral Commission mm -hmm. who supervised the election, the Ghana Police Service who provided security. Uh, I was surprised when I got to Jendu Park, they had a dedicated officer to accompany Park. me. Yes, yes, that's where we voted in second day. Across the, 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 the entire venue until I left. Uh, it was ample security for, for, for the location, cordoned off to ensure that people were not entitled to go in, did not go in. There were no incidents whatsoever. Uh, to congratulate all the party officers, police station, executives, uh, regional officers, coordinators for the work that they did, for mm -hmm. their commitment to our party. And I believe that they all deserve a round of applause an excellent job that they did over over the weekend. Uh, I think it's also important that I congratulate all the contestants, uh, all three of them, uh, for putting up a good show, uh, especially my senior Santa Clausian on our work in Japan, mm -hmm. uh, my former chairman. Uh, he and I served on the Communications Committee of Parliament in the seventh parliament. Uh, he was my chairman, I was his vice. Uh, we have an extremely good relationship, save that. On this occasion, my support was His Excellency, the Vice President. Uh, we had our own internal conversations and we agreed to disagree on this occasion. But he put up a good show. Um, I least expected that he was going to cross 30%. You did? Oh, yes, I, I did. Uh, uh, but, of course, he, he, he exceeded my expectation. And by so doing, 
reduced the vote that His Excellency the Vice President got. Uh, but of course, 61 percent uh, is, by all accounts, an overwhelming endorsement by the party. And so let me commend all of them for the work that they did for coming together after the election and pledging their commitment to the party and to um, extend a huge congratulations to His Excellency the Vice President. Uh, we all knew right from the very beginning that he was a man that the MPP needed at this time, at this hour, into election 2024. And the delegates of our party endorsed that position and have given him to the group of Ghana to evaluate him and to take a decision on him and his uh, opponent uh, in 2024, who happens to be the former president of the Republic, uh, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. Uh, it will be an interesting election. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, the question that you asked relative to the Gen Zs and you know, all of us, what, what then would influence our decision in voting? I, I think that the good people of this country would compare the record. Uh, thankfully, we have a former president who is contesting, a former or a sitting vice president. Uh, he's never been president before. Mm. Okay, uh, yes, he's the chairman of the economic management team of the New Patriotic Party, but he's not the president of the Republic of Ghana. He's a vice president uh, who obviously has uh, uh, a limit to decision making. Uh, and so we'll compare the work that he has done right from 2017, okay, uh, 2018, 2019 where the economic performance of this government was crystal clear to everybody. And Ghanaians will ask themselves that, how is it that a country which was growing at 7% average GDP year on year, okay, which 18 months after coming into government successfully exited the IMF program that our friends in the NDC had started and of 18 months had not met any of the indications that they themselves had committed to the world, to the IMF, to resuscitate the economy. Okay, uh, and, and will ask themselves that what happened? And contrary to the view that everything is related to COVID as an excuse, uh, Ghanaians who are not ostriches, who are objective, who understand the issues, will know that obviously 2020, we had a pandemic that uh, affected the entire world. Uh, it was almost of apocalyptic proportions. Okay, and uh, we make a determination uh, what impact that had on our economy, what commitments that the government made relative to how it is that we can uh, rebuild our economy as opposed to uh, our inability to bring back human lives when they are lost. And uh, notion that then defined decision that look put away economic indicators and focus on things that would help you preserve lives okay post that Ghanaians we evaluate the decisions that government took that let's cut expenditure increase our revenue the proposition that was sent to parliament in 2020 uh, 2021 uh, to increase our revenue by way of the e-levy and the recklessness with which parliament led by our friends in the ndc treated that entire exercise okay when we approved the budget which was the revenue and the expenditures of the government went ahead to pass the appropriations act mandating government to go ahead and spend and blatantly refused to pass some of the revenue measures that had already been approved in the budget which then led clearly by 31st December breaching the Public Financial Management Act. And if you look in section 22 of the act, it's very clear that Parliament by 31st December ought to do three things. Pass the budget, pass the appropriations, and pass every revenue measure that then would go to implement the budget. And if you take a decision not to approve the revenue measures, there would be consequences. Then we all saw the consequences by the downgrade. Okay, uh, and, and, and what it is that did to our economy. And finally, government taking a decision to go to the IMF to try and salvage 
the little that we, we were having, you know, uh, uh, to protect the economy from collapse. Subsequently, the policies that have been brought on board that has significantly gone to, as it were, stabilize our city economy beginning to pick up mm -hmm. and all that. And so that is the story of the new patriotic party government. Mm -hmm. uh, the people of Ghana would assess and compare it to uh, the former president who is seeking another mandate, mm -hmm. whose track record is well known to all of us, uh, even the cough in China was a basis for him telling us why his economic performance was abysmal. Mm -hmm. Okay? Cough, cough, cough in China. Mm -hmm. Yet, they turn around and tell us that the global pandemic where people died in droves across the world is of no consequence. And that is as a result of the economic management of the NPP under the leadership of His Excellency the Vice President. And they quickly forget that even before COVID, right, you remember the below the line reporting that the finance ministry introduced into our budget reporting cycle, which clearly identified two key expenditure components of the budget that were not planned, that were not part of the regular economic management of government. The energy sector, huge debts that had been accumulated by the NDC government, okay, and they tell us, last Friday I was listening to him on uh, Good Morning Ghana, talking about heavy lifting. Look at the data. We had no basis to sleep in darkness for four years. Absolutely none. The only reason was because there was no fuel that was coming through the West African gas pipeline to uh, Tema. And obviously, if you don't have gas as fuel to power your plants, okay, you ought to buy liquid fuels to power your plants for four years because the data clearly shows that installed capacity relative to our peak demand there was sufficient enough room yet we slept in darkness why it was not financial <coughs> you couldn't pay for fuel so Ghanaians had to sleep in darkness guess their solution guess their solution their solution was to contract additional power such that today Last week, we were having conversations with the IPPs. Beyond the 1.5 billion or so that we paid in 2017, 2018 to bring the energy sector debt down. Okay? There is an outstanding debt. Let me, I'm coming. I'm coming, please. Of nah, 1.6 billion. It's just an initial comment. 1.6 billion as of July. Guess what? 35% of that debt is excess capacity, power that you and I have not consumed. But the ECG, because of the contraction regime that was superintended by our friends in the opposition. Mm. Sometimes when I hear them talk, eh, when I hear them talk, they, they have the audacity to speak. But of course, they, it's a political, uh, democratic regime, and so they can't speak. But the good people of this country will be told the truth. They will know what it is that has transpired with respect to our economic management, the issues that we've had to deal with only recently, the banking sector clean up, which their solution, when they were in government, that's when the problem started. Their solution was to give liquidity support to people who chopped it like, like it was a personal pocket money. We live in this country, we all saw it. Yet they have the audacity to speak and compare an Akufuado administration and its economic it's performance, which has largely been impacted by external factors that had, the government had no control over. That did not impact only Ghana, but almost every country across the world. And so we will talk. Right. Next year will be an interesting year. All right. <laughs> so the Gen Zs who read, who are always on social media, who have the capacity and the ability to design, will make a decision in December. All right. Um, your initial comments and then what are the key indicators or benchmarks for which uh, pe people vote? Uh, my friend just delivered a gamut of excuses. His submission is an excellent exercise in excuse making for an utterly hopeless government. On the MPP premise itself, um, look, Baumia's performance was underwhelming. It shows that he lacks the requisite popularity within the MPP to have the wind in the sails going into the 2024 elections. Mm. It means that at least or almost 40% of MPP supporters agree with us in the NDC and the rest of the Ghanaian people that Baumia is not fit for purpose 
and does not have what it takes to govern this country. Because there is nobody in the MPP's history who has won elections, at least since the MPP voter base was expanded, who has had less than 90% and won the general election. President Kufado obtained 94% in 2014. I'm talking about the expanded voter base, not the old system that mm. had less than 2,000 mm. people, which we all agree is not the most representative sample to use in such an exercise. So to get the sort of support you need from your party, you must command a huge victory in internal primaries. But we have failed to achieve that. But it is not surprising that he failed to achieve that. Because if you look at the MPP, for all their loudness, you see a very muted response to this delegates conference. And it's because they know mm -hmm. that the energy and confidence has been sapped away from them. Because of their appallingly abysmal performance, appallingly abysmal performance, the utterly hopeless governance that they have delivered. So I come straight to your point about how the Ghanaian population will make a determination the benchmarks. about which of the two candidates to go for. And it's instructive that Bamiya himself mentioned the Gen Z uh, generation that we have. Mm. They are the generation who have been agitating the most <coughs> in recent times over the poor governance that this government is intending. You recall that a few weeks ago, they held a protest in Accra, during which they were bundled up by police people and more treated mm. under the ages of this government. In fact, in December, they have vowed to protest for the whole month of December. So the Gen Z people that Baumia is referring to have already come to a conclusion that this government has been useless in terms of delivering the things that matter to them and are protesting. There is no clearer assessment of what the Gen Z group we have in Ghana make of this government than the agitations on the streets of Ghana. But in order to put the matter in perspective, you see, when you come to compare two people running, especially two people who have records, you look at the resources they had, the opportunities they had, and what they delivered. Not so. He is here making a song and a dance about what he claims to be the abysmal performance of President Mahama. President Mahama was vice president for four years and president for four years. So you can compare him to Baumia when he was vice president or when he was president within a certain context. You see, when he was vice president, he was given a specific mandate which is chairmanship of the economic management team. So if you want to assess his performance as vice president, you look at the outcomes. And then you look at Baumier's outcomes too. And see whether when you put those two gentlemen side by side, who is superior. I say President Mama is superior, and it's based on fact. I'm going to give you fact. You see, yesterday, we put out the record of performance in terms of economic management between President Mama and Baumier. Now, we use President Mama's record as president because we know that when it comes to the economy, Baumia is the one who Akufuadu ordained and publicly told us was in charge of the economy. In 2018, Akufuadu categorically stated before parliament, he was sitting there, that Baumia is the man in charge of the economy. In 2019, 2020, they put up billboards advertising Baumia's leadership of the economic management team. They held town hall meetings at which Baumia purported to give an account of his stewardship as chairman of the economic management team. So everything that has happened under this economy in the last seven years is the responsibility of Baumia. And it is fair to compare it. Well, they say, oh, no, it is not fair to compare President Mahama to uh, Vice President Baumia. So compare them as Vice President. We will oblige them. Look, fortunately, economic performance is assessed by data, not so. So when President Mahama was vice president. His tenure as vice president ended in 2012. In 2012, our total public debt was 35.1 billion Ghana cities. Total public debt, 35.1 billion Ghana cities. Under Baumia, total public debt, at least as of the end of last year, which is the as head of the economic as head of the economic management team and vice president. President Mama too was vice president and head of the economic management team. Baumia increased this to 600 billion Ghana cities. 600 billion Ghana cities. President Mama's that was 35.1 billion when he was vice president. <laughs> now, total revenue, including borrowing, that is how much money did they have to run this economy? If you add taxes, non-tax revenue, borrowing, and everything that President Mama had as vice president, it amounted to about 70 billion Ghana cities. Baumia has had over 
830 billion if you do the same analysis for him. Debt to GDP, to GDP ratio, which measures whether or not if you put monetary value on economic output within the country over a year, you can use it to do a bullet payment of your debt. Mm. President Mama, debt to GDP ratio, it was 48.4%. It meant that if you put a monetary value on our GDP and theoretically attempt to use it to pay off our debt, we needed only 48.4% of our GDP to settle our debt. There will be an extra 51.6% for us to use for other things. Under Baumia, as of last year, it was 104%, which meant that if you did the same analysis, we will need all of our GDP plus another 4% to pay off our debt. Under President Mahama, we did not default on debt payment. Baumia has defaulted on debt payment. Under President Mahama, in fact, when he was vice president and chairman of the economic management team, inflation stayed at single, single digit for 33 months. Under Baumia, inflation as of the end of last year was 54.1%. When President Mahama was vice president and chairman of the economic management team, he didn't do any domestic debt testing. In other words, he paid people who had bought government bonds on time and in the right amount that it was agreed. Under Baumia, he has told them that they can go to hell. He doesn't have a dime to pay them. So today, bondholders, including pensioners, have endured an excruciating 100 billion Ghana CD expropriation of their bond money. That is why pensioners routinely demonstrate at the Ministry of Finance to press on their demand for payments. Under President Mahama, the growth rate that was recorded when he was chairman of the Economic Management Team is the best Ghana has had in its entire history. The highest amongst them was 14.4% when he was chairman of the Economic Management Team. In 2012, his last year, as vice president and chairman of the economic management team, this economy grew by 9.2 percent. Baumia's latest growth figure, which is last year, is 3.1 percent. Look, there is not a shred of basis evidence that suggests that Baumia can hold a candle to President Mama. Either when a candle, candle or match, if you like, is just an expression. It means that he comes nowhere near him. Look, if Ghanaians have given you 830 billion over a seven-year period, and they give somebody just 35, sorry, 70 billion over a four-year period, and he has these outcomes, which far outweigh anything you've done. You should hide under the nearest rock. You should not even attempt to become president. When President Mama was vice president and chairman of the economic management team, the city exchanged to the dollar at two cities. In fact, there's a video of Akufuado saying that if he was in government at the time, because the city exchanged at two cities to a dollar, he was going to resign. Today, only last week, there were forest bills in Ghana where you could get it for 13.5%. In fact, exactly a year ago today, the city was exchanging at 17 cities to a dollar. These are appalling records, mm. which show that Baumia has been a complete joke in terms of performance. Now, my brother has made a litany of excuses yeah. for this abysmal performance. Is COVID, it? Russia, Ukraine. Oh, please. Do, that is a joke. COVID, Russia, Ukraine. Oh, let me tell you, that is a joke. You see, when President Mama was vice president, in fact, let me give you a brief economic history. Every single Ghanaian government has had to contend with externalities. In, late, in the late 90s, the Rawlings government had to deal with a sudden slump in our commodity prices. And you record the lives of Mr. Kwame Pepera and Victor Solemi, who were in charge of uh, the finance ministry, explaining to Ghanaians why we had that situation. The MPP, led by President Kufuo, Akufuado, uh, Konedu Apioku, who was their spokesperson of finance, would have none of it. Under President so no gas was flowing. It was not the fault of President Mahama. How was gas going to go through a pipeline that was breached? So they shut it down. Mm. Number two, we had serious capacity deficits. Mm. And I'm challenging him, if he likes, let them turn off car power and the power plants that we built and see whether we will not sleep in darkness. In fact, even with those additions, we have been sleeping in darkness recently, haven't we? Last week, the Ghanaians not decry steel power cuts that happened, even with all those additions. Number two, they claim that they've been making capacity charges and uh, payments. When they were challenged to bring the breakdown, they brought us only up to a billion Tell dollars. For me. And when you check that, it mm. includes purchases for fuel. Mm. If you buy fuel, it means that you have used it. You didn't drink the fuel. So if you bought fuel to power thermal plants, why are you complaining that you are paying? Why? You think that power generation is cheap. If it was cheap, why is it an issue? Why? We built the Etuabo gas plant to ensure that $300 million that was used to buy fuel to fire thermal plants 
was completely taken off the table so that we will get cheaper gas. So it is their incompetence. Again, finally, let me address this financial sector clean up thing. You see, liquidity support. When a bank gets liquidity support, mm. it is a legitimate activity. The fact that the managers of the bank squandered that money does not mean that they didn't need that support. One bank that was giving liquidity support was Prudential Bank, but their managers did not squander it. They used it well. That is why the bank survived. If people squander the money, you hold them to account, like you've done to like the, the directors and the shareholders. Okay. That is different from taking 25 billion Ghana cities and saying that you are collapsing the bank. Look, there are banks in the UK, the US, that went into similar financial difficulty. They got liquidity support, bailouts from their government. They have paid back the money because they are back to health. So don't conflate or confuse mismanagement by bank managers with a wise decision to bail them out so that they don't collapse. So please let them stop making excuses. And I'm glad that he himself says that the Gen Z's have the capacity to research. When they look at these two men, as you've displayed on your screen here, mm. and look at their performance, given all the opportunities that they've had, and see that Baumia has been a complete joke mm. in the management of the economy, nobody will convince them to dismiss him at the post right. and give power to President Mama, who has shown capacity to do right. much more with far little. Well, at the end of the day, we know that when even in half year 2024 and the decisions are being made and the campaign period or the electioneering is hot and then we come to December 2024, please put uh, that on the screen for me. There will be key benchmarks because by close of 2016, we all know what our debt levels were and currently 2023, what our debt levels will be. I even as of now, we're in excess. And the, well, look, these are key indicators that everybody could read through. Now, we said Andre Japamesa. At the end of the day, whether the vice president was head of the economic, the, 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 the economic management team, or um, as the president has said, he was the brain behind him managing the economy astutely, the point is the vice president himself even while in a position, professed, and then came into office and said, even for example, the CD had been arrested, the key given to the, to the IGP. And, and these are key issues that the vice president will be when? measured by. That was when? That was in clearly 2017. Precisely. Before 2020, right? Before 2020. What was the economic performance of this government between 2017 and 2020? Are you saying, you that, are you saying that the benchmark oh, for chief, measuring chief, him chief, to chief, become the president chief. of Ghana will be that's his why, performance? That's why I said to you, that's why I said to you that the good people of this country will ask that how is it that a government that was doing so well, all our economic indicators were in, looking in the right direction, how is it that all of a sudden things have become the way they become. And, and what are the reasons? Precisely are you 2020 is critical. If it's not critical, discount all the issues that happened in 2020. Take it out. In fact, three items alone that this government had, had to deal with. Financial sector, excess capacity prevents COVID-19. 50.1 billion. That compared to how much we spent between the period 2017-2021 on free SHS, one district, one factory, planting for food and jobs, development authorities, Ghana Card, Zongo Development Fund, NAPCO, teacher and nursing trainee allowances, all come to 15.62 billion. All these flagship programs mm -hmm. cost 15.32 billion for the period 2017 to 2021. COVID, excess capacity, and financial sector cost you 50.1 billion. Three times. So it's irrelevant. Is it? But, see, I'm surprised that you put up this voodoo analysis on your screen. How is it voodoo? But how, how have you even verified it when they say, for example, that central banking financing is zero under President Mahama? Is that factual? 2016. Oh, I'm asking you a simple question. Is that factual? 2016. Ask at. Exactly. You say Yes. So you're comparing this entire period. Yes. Sir. No, 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 no. Of course. Of course. So, go ahead. Go so, ahead. so go you ahead. see. Go ahead. You go guys ahead. should verify some of these things before you put it. These out. are verified facts. How you? Let me how, ask. How, you, let me ask oh, you this. I'm asking no, you no, a no, simple question. Wait, 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 w
the benchmark for which Ghanaians gave the Kufuado led government in excess of close to a million was because they looked at the performance 2013 2014 so good at a time when we even had the finance minister being Kwabna Dufour, and we did so well within that period. And as a result of that, in 2016, we had gone to the IMF and decided to overlook the 2014 and then also look at 2016. What, what, what happened, happened in 2015? What happened in 2014? Well, 20, 2013, 2014, the economy did well. well so uh, at the end... Ha, 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 look, uh, the economy under President Mahama never recovered from 2012 after the general election. Yes, because we had the deficit 2012 at the after the general election. What happened? Yes, but at the what end happened? of... What happened? So, 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 so what are you uh, telling me about no, 2014? No, but at the end of the day, there was marked recovery. Why did we go to IMF in 2015? There was marked recovery. We were because sleeping. At the time, how, how, what no, 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 wait. recovery? Yes, because what, after 2012... What data are you speaking to? Because at, after 2012... This economy has been in comatose from 2012 through to 2015, hence the reason for going to IMF. Is that not it? Is that the case? Precisely what happened. So what's happening now? So I'm asking, what were the factors that precipitated that decision to go to IMF in 2015? Cough, cough in China, cough. And you want to take away a pandemic that affected the entire world? And he says that yes, and it's true, COVID affected every country in Africa, including our peers that he made reference to. But did our peers have to deal with a financial sector crisis in Togo, Benin, and Burkina Faso? Did Togo, Benin, and Burkina Faso have to deal with an energy sector debt that was crippling their economy? So you cannot look at Ghana and say that don't make reference to COVID because COVID affected everybody. But your underlying conditions were your financial sector cleanup bill which was as a result of the incompetence of Mr. Mahama's government, which had led that problem, and also the energy sector. And he makes a point that turn off car power and we'll go in darkness. You don't even understand what it is that you... He does not. He does not. He doesn't. Do Explain to me. Because you see, you see, he forgets, or rather conveniently, doesn't want the good people of this country to know, that he has a take or pay obligation on Sankofa gas. The ENI gas is on take or pay. 210 million scarves of gas per day. So it was important not to incur that debt without using the gas, hence car power. So let me tell you what it is that happens within the energy sector space. They have what we call the merit order dispatch, okay, which is something that Greco uses to manage both the gas and then the power production, uh, the, uh, the, the generation side. Just so that at every point in time, you minimize the cost to the state. And so, if gas plants are available, you dispatch gas plants first. Why? Because if you don't do that, what it means is that you would be paying for the gas that you are not consuming, and also car power, which is also on take or pay. So, let it not be said that because car power was contracted, if we have excess capacity, right, that should not have been the case. Because you have to manage the entire chain. And these guys gave us a double whammy of problems. Which is what? The gas on the take or pay from, that, from Sankofa. Of course, the investment was good. Save that at the time that they contracted Sankofa, ENI, it was the most expensive pipeline gas in the whole world. Uh, but at the same time, it was a good oh, no, investment. Because, see, it's giving us oil. It's giving us gas. Gas is relatively cheaper than light crude. So how does one investment but become I'm, a good investment and at the, the same cost, time you say cost, that cost, cost, cost. it has to be bastardized? Are you listening to me? I'm listening to you. Have I bastardized it? Did I'm you saying say that I said it was good. Except that at the time that they did the contract, the price that we paid for ENI gas was the most expensive gas in the whole world. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Or you think it's so important for Ghanaians to know? Let's not do this. Which okay, is what? That I'm, I'm saying that the project is good, yet I'm bastardizing. I'm giving you the bare facts. Okay? So let nobody but you deceive say you. That the project look, is look, a good project. look, look. The point is this. The data is here. Your energy sector, your peak demand, and everything that is associated with it, and why we slept in darkness for four years, Mr. Mahama cannot, under any circumstances, defend it. Because the facts speak for themselves. That as of 2012, Okay, 2013, 2014. This, this is the data. 
the thick blue graph, okay, is our installed generation capacity. The red line is our peak demand. And the blue line is what it is that was added in 2015 through to 2020. All these contracts had been signed by the NDC before they left office. And the plants were onboarded year on year until we got to look at that red line and see for yourself why we slept in darkness at the time that we have sufficient enough generation for four years. Yet, look at the contracts that they signed on. It's only in 2020 that we've begun, in fact, to consume some of that power. That is not to say that some of the power plants that they signed on were never turned on between the period. Because like I've explained to you, Gridco ought to look at the entire value chain with the view of minimizing cost on the state by deploying plants that would consume the fuel that is available. Okay? So, look, <laughs> this data that is put out there, uh, comparing which record, Mr. Mahama, well, Mr. Mesa, as president, at the end of the day, uh, 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 at the the end, and look, at nobody's the, going to run away from the economy. At the end of the day, 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 you say, well, car power contraction was good. Um, you That's not what I said. You, you had raised. That's not what I said. What do you I say? said? He said that if we say that there's excess capacity, let's turn on car power today. And off. I've explained to you, turn, turn, turn it, it off, off today. And I've explained to you the rationale for still keeping. It's good that you're, you're, you're a deputy energy minister. Absolutely. Sorry. And, so and, and we've had this debate before. Mr. 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 Okay. We have this so debate let before. nobody deceive us that we've, we've they had this did debate some before. Heavy lifting. We've also had. We've, we've also had. We've also had. We've, we've, we've also had Wachija, a former energy minister, also reiterate reasons why, even though you had bastardized agreements, even including Ameri, you, you had cause to even now extend them, including Kappa. Why? So if you don't extend, I don't know if Kappa has been extended. The only plants that I know they've had conversations on renegotiation is AXA. Okay? I've told you that you have a double whammy situation on your hands. You have a gas that is on take or pay. So, if ENI generates the gas, you've contracted 180 million scarves on take or pay. And so you have to consume it. Because if you don't consume it, you are paying for it regardless. But in opposition, you bastardize. Bastardize what? Agreement. We moved the plant from Takradi, uh, from uh, what you call it, Tema to Takradi. Not so. And in fact, went ahead to do the uh, um, what the reverse flow from Takradi to Tema, so that the excess gas in the west can be transported to Tema. In fact, went ahead to do the transaction with Jensa via GMPC to build. The pipeline to Kumasi so that we can move the Ameri plant. And believe it me, Ameri you plant. Already moved wait, the plants, wait, right? wait, wait, wait. It has not been moved. turned on since the contract ended. Are we in Dumzo? Are we in Dumzo? Then why did we have the recent um, press statements? It, it, was, it, was, it was interesting how when I saw the outcry, uh, two days outage, and it reminded me that, whoa, really? You call it outcry? <laughs> uh, yes, it was. There was a public. There was a public outcry. Wasn't there a promise that there will never be in the doom so at Two all? days, right? It's interesting. You slept in darkness for four years, four solid years. Are you telling me other oh, people? Wait, no, wait, 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 you, 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 I'm telling you, you slept in darkness for four years, and the people who superintended mm. that four years darkness have come back today and say, "Vote for me," mm. because of. Temporary economic challenges that we are having. So you call them temporary? As, of course they are. Mr. Boache, uh, Mr. Okay. Mr. Mesa. So, so really? These I, reasons that you adduce, are they not the reasons why you look at the clarion call, John Dramani Mahama, alongside his vice presidential candidate, lost the 2016 So election. why is he coming back? Because you have done worse. Oh, what do you mean by we The done indicators oh, please, do please, indicate please, that please, please, as at now, you perform poorly. Please, please, please. That's why I told you that the good people of this country will ask the key questions though. They will ask the questions. You mean they, can't, they will not ask now, they will ask next time? Oh, they will ask. They keep asking. Okay? And they will keep asking. And they will look at what it is that government is doing to turn around the economy. Okay? We've done it before. All right. Our track record before a global pandemic is there for all to examine. Post that, if you think that the COVID and the issues that have occasioned our economy 
is irrelevant when every country across this globe mm. is really obviously with different right. degrees be, right. based on their own mm. peculiar circumstances mm. and i'm telling you that the good people of this country will ask a key question right and if mr mahama was rejected mm. flat out in 2016 mm -hmm. and again in 2020 why is he coming back right even a a Felix, even, <laughs> even, 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 even in addition to that, I do know that in 2019... Please, two texts. What? Please, please, please. Two please texts. I accept when we were speaking. I'm not going to tolerate interference. Even in 2019, <laughs> the city depreciated by 13%. <laughs> but I was going to make the point. And compare the record oh, of NDC before please, that. Please, please, please. I told please. you that I won't tolerate when, interference. I you know, when you were talking, he didn't talk, please. Even Akufwad, who was thrown out in 2012, and 20, uh, what do you call it? No, 20, 2008 and 2012 came back. President Obama was opposition leader in 2020. So if you lose elections, it's not a big deal. If losing an election was a reason why you never came back, Akufuado would never be in the flat of house drinking tea this morning. So that is a huge joke. The other thing is that this government is a pathetic joke. Their excuses are laughable. It is a reason why Gen Z folks are demonstrating against them. Because they have made these pathetic excuses over and over again, and they look like clowns. To begin with, you are telling me that our entire economic problem is due to a 50.1 billion payment that you made for SS Energy and COVID expenditure. Meanwhile, you have had 830 billion. You have borrowed up to 600 billion Ghana cities. If you take 50 billion out of that, and that is why your economy has collapsed, you are a joke. You must be thrown out of government at the earliest opportunity. Number two, the lies that he tells about the energy sector. He forgets that he's not the only person who knows anything about energy. Look, there is a difference between installed capacity and available capacity. What you install does not mean that you will turn on everything at the time. You see, you need options. Every government that has come since the 80s has had doom so. In 1984, there was doom so. In 1998, there was doom so for over a year. Under President Kufo, there was doom so for over a year. At the time, I was a student at Kiyan University. Between 2007 and 2008, we all did there was doom so. They sat down in government for eight years and did not add anything significant to our generation capacity. It was the mining companies who added 80 megawatts of generation capacity to power their own operations. Kufo did zilch. And then they went to bring some toy generators. Their own employee, an NDC MPP member, Charles Yakubobi, described those generators as toy generators because they were not significant. When President Obama came to power in July 2012 as president, just a month after that, we had a problem with the West Afghan gas pipeline. But it was also known that our generation capacity was inadequate, so we needed to bolster it. To build a thermal plant, you need three years. So you don't sit down and wait for the problem to come before you ramp up generation capacity, like they did for eight years. So the generation capacity we added is what is bolstering our energy situation now. Number two, this lie they tell about take or pay, let him put his hand on his heart and tell you that they have not signed contracts that have take or pay clauses in them, as I speak to you. Or President Kufo did not sign clause, uh, contracts that had take or pay clauses in them. Look, there's no investor who will come and invest in the energy sector without a guarantee that you buy the power. That is what they take or pay clauses. But they are liars. They are shameless liars. So they have signed contracts under him as deputy energy minister with take or pay clauses. Let him deny it here. So you have signed contracts with take or pay clauses. And yet you are berating another government for signing contracts with take or pay clauses. When the investor puts between 100 and 150 million dollars into building a thermal plant, he must have a guarantee that that investment will yield revenue for him to be able to service his debt and make his margins. That is what is the standard practice. President Kofu has signed take or pay contracts. Well, that it's increased our liabilities. I'm, I'm asking you a question. But you are talking about no, the standard I'm practice. I'm asking you a question. It's a standard practice. Look, I have an MSc in energy economics. For, so I have done research. I know for a fact that take or pay clauses are normal. And especially in crisis situations, mm -hmm. they will demand it before they help you to ramp up your generation capacity. So this ridiculous lie must end. You, are, you lie too much. You are shameless hypocrites. You eat pork, you say you don't eat pork, but you eat pork soup. You don't like the copay clauses signed by the NDC, but you love the copay clauses signed by the MPP. Number three, the economy started deteriorating long before COVID came. First of all, the idea that we should cut off assessment of the Akufuado Baumia administration, especially Baumia, as 2019 is a joke. Then, after 2019, you should have packed back and baggage and left government. Every 
every single minute you spent in government will be assessed. So your tenure did not end in 2019. It continued and it will end in 2024. You have an obligation to manage the economy such that whatever situation exists, we get the best outcomes. You were reckless. Look, I was a candidate for election in AAK. I know for a fact that your money, your money was taken and given to MPP people free of charge. The advice chairman for the Northern region, Felicia Tete, has told us, and it is on record, that she got $100,000, sorry, Ghana cities from COVID funds. Another 70,000 cities was sent there, which she gave to others. All their constituency chairmen were sent money from the public kitty. Free. And that is what created the deficit that we got. And that is what has driven us into this economic crisis. Number three, since 2018, that's Roland, that's oh, number four. No problem, number four. <laughs> since 2018, Roland, mm. every single year, they have recorded a deficit higher than what they inherited in 2016. In 2016, the deficit was 6.1, as you see. On, and let me make it clear. They cannot challenge a single figure on this table. If he is able to point out one single flaw mm, in this table, me, I will not contest the election again. This is ironclad. It is cast in stone. They can't do anything about it. But let me come back to the facts. In 2018, they recorded a deficit of 7.5%, which is higher than the 6.1 they met at the time there was no COVID, a lie. In 2019, they recorded a deficit of 7%, which is higher than what they met, a lie. Was there COVID in 2019? There was not. In 2019, the CD depreciated by 13%. Was there COVID? In 2020, he should look at his own finance minister's budget. COVID had come. By July, they knew that COVID was there. So when you are going to do a budget, you factor in everything that you need to do. He went to parliament in the middle of the year to tell us that, oh, all the analysis I did in November like the previous year for the 2020 budget are off gear because of COVID. So I am coming to do a new one which factors in COVID. You did a calculation and said that, oh, because of COVID, you have a deficit of 11%. Because elections were coming, you started spending by heart as if you didn't have a head, like a headless chicken. And when we finished the election, you had recorded a deficit of 17%, a huge hole had been created to our finances. And yet you are here telling us that we should discount that and that your tenure ended in 2019. So between 2019 and now, is it my grandfather's dog that is managing the Ghanaian economy? They said COVID and Russia, Ukraine has effect. It, I'm saying that it's a joke. You see, when I told you that other countries all have COVID. Look, there are countries that we actually sell electricity to. They don't even have generation plants. We sell electricity to in order for them to survive. Togo and Benin, in terms of their economic weight, they are nowhere near us. But check their figures and see whether it has deteriorated. This is a clueless bank who have wasted their money. Why? At the time that COVID was in full flight, you thought that a $450 million cathedral is your priority. The president stood on the platform and told us that his biggest priority, when COVID was in full flight, was the building of a $450 million cathedral. They have committed up to $110 million into that useless hole in the middle of Accra. That hole, they've paid $58 million. The contractor is holding certificates worth $52 million that has to be paid. If you add it, that is $110 million. If you pay $110 million to dig such a useless hole, why will your economy not slap? It, is it COVID well, that well, caused you to dig the hole? Well, the board had a press conference last week. They said everything was fine. Well, that, board, that board is a joke with the greater respect to them. They are a waste of our time. They the said board they, is a joke? They said they've imported statues. As we sit here, you cannot buy, uh, what do you call it, uh, logistics for the Renda unit at Kolebu. 19 people have died since May. And you've spent Ghanaian money to go and import statues to come and put in a hole. That is useless governance if I ever saw one. In fact, it is further reason why they must be thrown out at the earliest opportunity. So this government have lost their way. Baumia has failed. If you fry it, you cook it, you grill it, you roast it, everything you do shows that Baumia has failed. Number five, President Mama, when he was vice president. You see, we, too, we had eight years in government. They forget that. They forget that before... 2012, we also had had four years. Then we should also say that assess us up to just 2012. After mm. that, cut it. But that argument does not make an iota of sense. It is a senseless argument to tell me that after 2019, we should not look at your performance again. Look, crisis does not mean you should be reckless. Mm? Roland, if your house is on fire, you do things that do not extend the fire, don't you? If you wake up and you see that there's fire in your bedroom, don't you take steps to ensure that it doesn't come to the hall or the living room. Mm. But these are people who saw fire in their bedroom and they poured petrol on it instead of pouring water on it. And they tell us that because there was fire, excuse me if my whole house gets burnt. When they could have done something about it. Number six, there has been no time 
where the Ghanaian government has been given so much largesse than under these people. How so? They got over 30 billion Ghana cities because we had COVID free. The World Bank, sorry, the IMF, we sat down one day. When we woke up, they had given us $1 billion for free. $1 billion. No Ghanaian government has had that. You got $1 billion. At the time, it was worth about $7 billion Ghana cities. Then, other donor agencies brought us monies. There is a regulation in our books that the Bank of Ghana cannot lend you more than 5% of the previous year's revenue. Baumia recklessly, recklessly supervised the contraction of 77 billion Ghana cities from the, from the Ghana, what do you call it, the Bank of Ghana. In 2016, we had zero central bank financing. Look, in 2014, we borrowed $1 billion, the equivalent of $1 billion from the Bank of Ghana. The following financial year, we paid everything in full. You go and pay the 77 cents. They can't pay. So the Bank of Ghana has illegally, unlawfully, and recklessly written off over 40 billion Ghana cities of that debt for them without recourse to parliament. So when he tells you that there are reasons why Ghanaians to accept this appalling, abysmal, mm. horrible performance, right. which has planned us in the most catastrophic economic hardships ever in our history, they should be dismissed. And I'm glad that the Gen Z folks follow this. That is why they are on the streets. Indeed, December, they say the whole December, they are going to sleep with you at the flat house. You mean the series of demonstrators have been announced? You. you think that the All Gen right. Z have been no, the Mr. Mr. They have had the excuses, but they know that it is a joke. They know that they are only telling tall tales. Mm. After they are two no, two mm. no, Baumier's two no, two no mm. in opposition, he mm. told us that if the fundamentals of the economy are weak, the exchange rate will expose you. Then he comes to power and tells us that, oh, if the exchange rate exposes you, it doesn't mean the fundamentals are weak. What kind of illogic is that? Mm. What kind of nonsensical propaganda is that? Right. And you see, you in the media must hold them to strict account and proof. The financial sector cleaner that he's talking about. Look, when banks run into difficulty, you must think as a government. Your first recourse is not to collapse them. When you give liquidity support, it is to ensure that when you take your check to the bank, they honor it. They say it's one of the uh, two uh, no, no, options. So no. they decided to choose the other. The other one collapses the bank. What they have done is that, first of all, they have removed about eight Ghanaian indigenous banks from the financial sector. So we are shot by eight banks in the financial sector. I beg your pardon. But I have pointed out to you that there are banks that manage the liquidity support well, like Prudential Bank. Why don't they mention it? They were astute managers of the funds, but those who embezzled it, do not give a justification for collapsing right. the bank. You can hold them to account, mm. like was done elsewhere. But you are reckless. There are some of the banks well, Mr. Mr. that they saw political coloration in, and so they collapsed it. And you use 25 billion to solve a problem that you, can, you could have used 9 billion Ghana. Let me explain to you. Look, as part of the IMF conditions in 2016, we did what we call an asset quality review, which revealed that these eight banks were in trouble. So the decision was that. Instead of collapsing them, save them. The first step was to give them liquidity support so that they honor their commitment to their depositors. The next step was to pump in $9 billion as a loan, mm. which they will pay back after mm. the government through the Bank of Ghana has ensured that proper management is put in. They came in, they saw this arrangement and decided that they will pump $25 billion of your money. Okay. Because you see, if you don't collapse the bank, depositors won't demand their money. Right. Once they hear that the banks have collapsed, that is when they come and demand. And again, check. In 2020, early 2020, Baumia, he is on record to have said that they were not going to pay the depositors. They will issue bonds. When the depositors started agitating in June and they saw elections were coming, then they quickly went to take 25 billion to pay them just to carry favor with 4 million bank depositors. Well, so Mr. Mesa, these are people they're, they're, who don't know economic I, I have management. a couple of questions from, so, from some of our excuses. viewers. So let me just put that to well, you. You um, want me to respond to... No, you, you will respond. Well, once I shall ask you about... All the concerns that will be raised about PDS and its relationship with ECG, uh, so supposed to have been revenue that was collected, are still not being accounted for. Is that true? I'm, I'm not aware. No, you are not aware? I'm not. You are not aware? No, I'm not aware. See, you see, uh, Felix City here, this is Akufuado, was thrown out. Akufuado contested an election as an opposition leader, and he lost. Uh, Mr. Mahama was sitting president and he was thrown out. So if you're talking of people who have been thrown out, <laughs> you cannot ascribe that to somebody who was looking to come in. Uh, the description really fits the person who was sitting there and was booted out. And that description fits only one man, John Dramani Mahama. That's clear on the record. 
you cannot dispute it under any circumstances. See, you say generation Gen, Gen Z people are demonstrating. Why? Is it the first time that we are seeing demonstrations in this country? Is it the first time? Under your watch, there were no demonstrations in this country. Unemployed Students Association of Ghana. We saw them under Mr. Muhammad's watch. Look, some of us don't have short memory. Though. Unemployed graduates. And, yes. And useless, you sit here. Most useless organization. You sit here. MPP created. Yeah, you sit here. Yeah, yeah, Today, unemployment is you, no interjection. You, interject. you, you, is, you sit here. Where is that organization? You sit here and, and call and somebody. You sat here and say you don't you won't want to uh, entertain any interjections. You are doing the same thing. Me. I actually beat back. You see, or you sit here stop. and it's call fine, people lies. Right. Say that we are lying. And you go ahead and say that President Kufour added zilch to our generation capacity. With them. Who built it? Roland. Who built Buidam? Came on stream in 2015. Who built it? It didn't come on stream in 2015. We damn came on stream in 2013. Fine. But it is. Look, look, you say. Please, 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 let's, please. Let's, 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 let's make it. Who let's built it? What did you add in eight years? Tell me. You sit here and say, justifying the reckless power contracts that you signed, that generation plans take four years to build. The we damn there was supposed to be to, to, to come up overnight. Right? We damn. What was supposed to have been been completed the day it was started. I said that you lied that President Kufo did not add anything. You, you, because you this, I don't have a problem. No, I, 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 I'm exposing your no, lie. No, You're sitting here saying that is you lied. In eight years, the only addition was a mines plant in eight, eight, eight years. Eight. Right. You started building See, with them wait, in 2008. Wait, 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 in the year that you were living. What are you talking about? In 2008 when you were living, that's when you started with them. You see, Mama, he brought car power in 2015. You see, he brought a Mary in 2015. We did all he's saying is that it started under the Kufuor Fine, great. But um, if I say that in eight years, but then allow me to have my it is true. Please, just have two minutes. Wait, wait, our time is up. You see, two minutes and then I haven't said that the assessment of the MPP government should end in 2019. But that's what you're saying. I haven't said so. I haven't said so. I haven't said so at all. What I've said. Is that the good people of this country will ask questions that how is it that a government that was managing the economy between 2019 2017 doing so well 2018 because you managed, doing so managed well. it in 2020 let him have, let, let him have his two minutes that's the problem you have roland Felix, My, let's let's have have say your time is up yes. i won't have the time what no, happened no, no, you in 2020 let's also have two minutes let's have two minutes, have two minutes. Have two minutes. I, 120 seconds they will ask the questions 120 seconds it's a wrap up please and i proceeded to say that they will further ask that what is it that the government is doing to take us out of the circumstances that we find ourselves in today. It's a matter of fact. You sit here and say that the Akufuado government has borrowed 600 billion. Is it factual? Is it? He says you people should hold us to account. Yet he there, he does not require accountability. The debt as a two, oh, as a is that what he said? Was Wait, I don't yeah, have a problem. He, hey, he says that Kufado government has borrowed 600 billion. I wrote it. Sure. Is it factual? That's the total debt of Ghana. Now, as at the time that you were leaving office, what in dollar terms, oh, wait, in dollar terms, what was the debt? 120 divided by 4, 34 billion. Has that been paid? Remember that at every point in time, when you are calculating your debt, you use the current exchange rate to compute. And so if you multiply that 34 billion or so by 11 today, that comes to 374 billion. So that's the component of the debt today attributable to John Mahama. Equivalent in CDs. Yet, 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 shouldn't it be? Oh, shouldn't it be by the four point two? I don't have a see, it's calculated on a day by day basis. Oh, I understand. So, yes, shouldn't you can say be? that the I'm exchange rate, the, question. the exchange rate, which is a factor of the debt, but to sit here and say that you, Pope John Paul's junior brother, speaks no lie, truth to sit here knowing this fact that the total debt. It's a function of your exchange rate at the time of computation. And say that Baumia 
has borrowed 600 billion. Is it true? Is it? If you take out the 374 billion. Why is it 374 billion? Because I'm multiplying 34 billion by 11. Because on this day. What kind of Takashi economics? But that's exactly what it is. That is exactly what, what it is. What was the exchange rate? Roland, what was the exchange rate? Roland, 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 Roland. If the dollar was, what was four, the exchange rate in December 2016? If the dollar was four today, would our debt be four, 600 billion? But uh, because of mismanagement. So the point, the point that, that I'm making is this. That the rate has the gone point, to 11, Wait, 12. wait, wait. The point that I'm making is this, that the fact that your debt has increased does not necessarily mean that you've added more debt. Because the computation of your debt at any one point in time is a function of the exchange rate. No, we do understand that. You don't. Saying... Because if you do, you would have corrected him <laughs> by no, no, pointing out that. to him that to suggest that Baumia has borrowed 600 million is flat out lie. You can say legitimately that the management of the exchange rate, which we all can determine what factors influence it, has led to a growth in our debt from so much to 600 billion but you cannot attribute that entire debt as having been borrowed by mpp the propaganda that they go out there and sell uh, to the people dr baumian said that if look, you want to look at how look, stable your I economy agree. is you look at the i agree rate. i agree so I what mean, are you saying no, you are I, contradicting yourself i'm not contradicting anything you, you, are, you are just not listening or you're being mischievous no, because, I'm listening to uh, you. You are not. Or you're being mischievous. Pure mischief. Because what I'm saying to you I'm is not that being mischievous. We can have a debate. Because we can have a debate on the exchange rate. And I agree. Consistently agree with the sexless the vice president that when the, your exchange, your fundamentals are weak, your exchange rate will expose you. And our fundamentals so you are, are weak. You agree with that? Of course. Our fundamentals but, are weak. But at the same time, you say our fundamentals are the weak. The reverse. Our fundamentals are weak. The reason why we've had to go to the IMF to try and get some help in rebuilding our economy. And even back. do the domestic debt exchange to make as well as the external. Course, Please go ahead. But you see, the domestic debt, debt exchange, the mischief that he put out, what, what is it in simple terms? Government is stretched. True. There's no denying. And that's why I said that the good people of this country will ask the questions as to what accounted for where it is that we are. Government is saying that, look, for reason A, B, C, D, E, that has happened, I'm unable to meet all my obligations as and when they fall because my debt is unsustainable. So can we renegotiate? There's no denying of the obligation. I've worked in a bank for seven years. I know what it is that restructuring of loans and advances mean. That's exactly the same thing that the government of Ghana is doing with its bondholders. That look, Rather than look on so that our economy collapse because of factors that clearly are not within our control, we are where we are. Let's restructure these obligations so that we can meet the debt that we owe you. Whose duty well, is it to manage the exchange rate? It's government. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, no, no, thank I you agree. very much. Okay. <laughs> now, now, <laughs> yes, yes, two yes, minutes yes, to stop. So, 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 oh, please wrap. The you, you know how to. Oh, you know right. how to. You know how to say oh. You know how oh, to do that. Okay, take over the program for the next one. You know how to do that. Well, Go ahead. The debt as captured here is up to the end of 2022. Even that does not include SOE debt. Look, Coco Bot alone owes 15 billion Ghana cities. They owe contractors close to 10 billion Ghana cities. Almost all SOEs put together, if you add your debt, it's about 30 billion Ghana cities. The IMF actually asks it when they come to do the IDSC. This cuts off at 2022. As I speak to you, our debt is in essence of 700 billion. So when you do the subtraction, the 600 billion is perfect. Number two, if that analysis that he did shows anybody else a liar, then the biggest liar in history is Baumia. In 2016, he told us that President Kufour left 9 billion Ghana cities as debt, not so. Mm. And that the total debt as of the end of 2016 was 120 billion. So mm. President Obama has added 110. What happened to his exchange rate analysis? The biggest liar in history is Baumia, if we go by your analogy. The other issue too is that he says that they were managing the economy well between 2017 and 2019. Look, even that is a joke. Compare the economic figures between 20, 2009 and 2012. In 2009, we had just come, we had a growth of 4%. In 2010, without oil, we grew by 8%.
In 2011, we grew by 14.4 percent. In 2012, we grew by 9.2 percent. The highest ever growth is 8.1 percent, which was brought on by even the work that we had done because the real economic impact started coming in in September of 2017. <laughs> the last point is that the reason why we are in the mess is that in 2020, they hid behind COVID to be reckless. Because we had an election, they overspent. It is that deficit that has dogged us to today. So let him stop telling this thing that we should cut off the economic management in 2019. That's why I asked the question. That between 2019 and now, is it my grandmother's dog that has managed this economy? Nobody has said that. Nobody has said that. But that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Go ahead. I'm correcting the misimpression that you put out there. Take the budget of 2020. You will see that we had a deficit of 17%. The reason for that is that they engaging on budgeted expenditure. They borrowed money and spent it. Within the fiscal period. Exactly. When they themselves had gone to parliament to tell us that this is what we will spend, they knew that COVID was there. Everything that they wanted to do in COVID, they had started in the budget. But they saw elections coming and decided to overspend. All that right. is what has destroyed the economy. So it is your fault and not anybody. In fact, he even blames NDC MPs, NDC MPs for opposing e He says that because of that, the economy collapsed. Right. Because we fought for the Ghanaian to protect them from introducing a draconian tax. You say that is our fault. So when did you pass that appropriations act? When I put water, when I put water, <laughs> when to demonstrate why did you, in Why did you pass the appropriations bill? Be, what, then he should be accused Why of did you pass the appropriations no, act? He should be accused right. of the appropriations act. Then he lies to your What is responsibility? Why did you pass the appropriations act? All right, all right, all right. Why did you pass the appropriations act? Why did you pass the appropriations act? Please, 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 off their mics for me. The appropriations act. So, my lead, my lead director today, Harriet Asumda Mensah has decided to give me two minutes to read messages okay so he says she says brakweku says roland the modern vice presidency is a position of significant power and is widely seen as an integral part of a president's administration while the exact nature of the role varies in each administration most modern vice presidents serve as key presidential advisors governing partners and decision makers and represent the president here in ghana our president and the vice, especially the vice, is managing a committee for the economy. So what is he saying? I have a couple of messages also. Let me just uh, make sure that I read them appropriately. As Harriet assumed the Mensa has allowed me. I have this one from uh, Flap Together. It says, if you bring Felix to your show, I'll delete your channel from my decoder. <laughs> so that's what he said. But uh, even he has sent a text. Even he has sent a text. He had already seen him. Why are you what, what the, uh, but he didn't have to make his point. He didn't have to make his point. It's a message. 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 All right, so he uh, says, this one is from uh, Alfred Kojo Triddles. He says, Honorable Japa Mesa has forgotten that the MPP led by the President and the Vice Prime Minister managed the economy long before COVID. Indeed, long before the Russian and Ukraine war. They should remember, even in 2019, economists in our various universities were telling them and projecting that we will go to the IMF based on the rate of expenditure. The only option that the MPP has is Dr. Baumia, which means the MPP claim that they have the men who are just empty. Just look at the state of the econ economy. NAPCO trainees are old. Nursing trainees are old. And all of them are right here in Ghana. Isa from Tema says it looks like the seat is hot for Mr. Mesa. Isa, good morning to you from Tema. Now this one from Dipku Ishmael from Wa O Traffic Lights. Please, 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 please. please. <laughs> Ghanaians will not allow an apprentice of a uh, failed president to rule us. And then we have, uh, please tell me, Japa, that the good people of Ghana include pension bondholders and customers of defined banks who have been denied our investment are watching. Isahaku Tamale. And then I have this one from Dr. Edu Usisakwede who says data from 2006 to 2022 shows that the exchange rate accounts for 29% of debt development in Ghana. Thank you for this contribution. Very instrumental. And I've loved this one as well. And then uh, Nana Ayimedu says, please extend greetings to my yes, yes, lovely wife, Rosalinda Ayimedu Bekoin yes, you know of the Youth <laughs> Employment <laughs> Agency. So, Mrs. Ayimedu, oh, let me read this last one. Please, last one. 
uh, and then we'll go. I've enjoyed the show. To play. Last one, last one, last one, last one, last one, last one. It's the birthday of um, Gloria Agosikaba Nate. It's from your sweetheart, Julius. All of you sending messages were grateful. And thank you to you as well. We're taking a break. We'll be right back. A tale for channel I will share video. We also a pen dream TV in patch or what share we I didn't tell be our video in whom be on a send by a walk zero two seven seven one two eight seven 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 zero two seven seven one two eight seven seven seven. Oh, what's up? No man, so send your voice, Nebra, Nebbo Magana for you now to Unka. I didn't come out. I'm in the pen dream TV. I said, so far, so good. Se open online portal ewo Ghana. Ah ni pa share, ni pa follow, ni pa comment here. To my best of knowledge, without any biases, I have been doing TV. 